In this video, we're going to install a version of the Oracle database that you can use on your very own computer. Now, as you can might imagine, there are lots of different types of versions. There's the Oracle Database Enterprise Edition. That's the full featured, very expensive version. So you'd install that on a server at work. There's the Standard Edition, that costs less money. The Personal Edition, that costs about $500. So I recommend you get the Express Edition, which is a free to use version. Now, it does have some limitations. Primarily, it's resources. You can use only up to two CPUs, central processing units, two gigabytes of RAM, and 12 gigabytes of user data on disk. Now, if you're going to do more intensive computing, it would be a problem, but we're not going to need such intense computing at an early stage. So here we are, we have Oracle Database 21C Express Edition for Windows X64. What does this X64 mean? Well, it means that this is for 64-bit computers. So if you've got a 32-bit computer, I'm sorry, you won't be able to use the 21C version. Instead, you would have to find and download an 11G Express Edition. So what are all of these numbers? Well, this was the number that Oracle gave to all of its releases. So the 10 version came out in 2003, the 11G came out in 2007, the 12C in 2013, and then they started doing what Microsoft were doing with like Office 2007, Office 2010. So they jumped from a 12C to an 18C released in 2018, then 19C and a 21C. If you're wondering what the C and the Gs mean, well, C means cloud, and G means something called grid computing, which supports clusters of services treated as one unit. So it jumped from 11G to 12C to 18C. So you would have to find an Oracle 11G Express Edition. And I found one here, for instance, the oicbasics.com. And there is a download button here. However, do make sure that it is a real file and make sure that you've got plenty of antivirus and check everything you download well. So you can see that my Oracle 21C database is downloading and what I'm going to do is pause the video until it downloads. Now Oracle Database Express Edition has now been downloaded. So let's go to my downloads folder and refresh. I can right and click on this and I can say open with Windows Explorer. If you've got WinZip installed, you can also do that. So you can see I've got all of these files, but they haven't been extracted. So what I need to do is right and click over here on the left hand side and go to extract all. So this will extract it into its own folder. So it's very important that you distinguish between the folder icon and the zip icon. So you don't want to be using the zip anymore. You want to be using the folder. If you're using Windows 11, then again, you should right and click and go to Extract All. There you go, and it is now extracting. So now it's extracted, we go into the folder, Oracle XE, and scroll down to the bottom, and we have got this setup icon here. So I'll double click on it. If you get a dialog box asking you if you want to make any changes, then click yes. And you can see it is now preparing to install. So it's configuring the Windows installer. So I'll click next. I accept the terms of the license agreement. You should read it. What I generally do is copy it into a Word document and then have a read. Click next. Now notice where it installs. It doesn't install it into C program files. Instead, it's installing into its own directory, C, APP, and then product 21C. So if you're looking for where the actual source files are stored, you won't find them in C program files. Now, this is important. This is a password that's going to be used for sys, system, and PDB admin accounts. So these have access to basically the entirety of your data. So make sure you choose a really good password. So one with symbols and uppercase letters and numbers and that sort of thing. So click install to start. So it's going to take quite a few minutes. In the previous version, it took 20 minutes. So I'm just going to speed up the video and let it install.
you now see that we've got this second dialog box opened as well. So you can see how well it's installing as well. So it took quite a number of minutes to install. So it took around 10 minutes to install, but there were no problems whatsoever. So I'll click finish and that's the back end installed on my computer. So that's the back engine installed. So that's the bit that does all of the work. But what about the front engine? What, how are we going to actually be able to use it? Well, for this, we're going to use a program called Oracle SQL Developer. Now there are alternatives to this, some really much older, but this one allows us to use a lot of functionality. Plus, if you did want to go further into programming language, the PL SQL, then SQL Developer will help you do this. So again, we're going to go for the Windows 64-bit version with JDK8. So that is the Java Development Kit included. So that is necessary. If you're trying to install the Windows 32-bit, then you can download it, but then you'd also First of all, you should download the JDK 8 earlier than that. So download that first and then download the Windows 32 bit. But I'm going to use a 64 bit with JDK 8 included. So let's click on this. So I have reviewed and accept the Oracle license agreement. So here is the Oracle license agreement. Again, need to have a good read of that and click on download. So you can see that for this, we need to create an Oracle account. So let's do that. So we need information, email address, password, country name, job title, work phone, company name, address, city, and zip and postal code. Now, if you haven't got a company name, then just put none. So do all of this. You can send me marketing communications if you wish, and then click on create account. Now you can see I've put NA for a lot of these items and also I've just put a made up a group of numbers for the work phone, but it seems all happy with this. So I'll click create account and then you'll see that it will be sending me an email to verify that my email address is correct. So having clicked on that email, you can see success. So click continue, your account is ready to use. And now I need to go back to where I was. And if I just click refresh, just to make sure it's, I'm logged in now, click on download. And now I can sign in. So now it is downloading. Now I'm downloading a version that is 21.4. Now the version that you might be downloading will probably be a later version. However, there really is a minimal change between the one I'm installing and the one that you're installing. So whatever the latest version is, as long as it doesn't say it's a beta or test version, then you're okay to install it and it will have pretty much the same functionality as my version. So I'm just going to pause the video and let it download. Right, so now it's downloaded. Again, I'm going to go to my downloads and you can see again, I've got a zip. So I'm going to right and click on it and extract all. So it'll take about 30 seconds for it to extract everything. So now it has finished. I will go into the folder again, not the difference between the folder icon and the zip icon, going to SQL developer. And you might think, that you now have to install something, but no, you don't. It is already installed. So if this is a good place for your SQL developer to live, then leave it there. If not, then you can move it to a different folder. So I'll move the entire folder at once. So 
Now what I need to do is open the application called SQL Developer. So here you can see it's opening. I don't want to import preferences from a previous version, so I'll click no. And so here you are. This is Oracle SQL Developer. So now I've installed the back engine, which does all the work, and the front engine of Oracle Database and Oracle SQL Developer onto my machine. In the next video, we'll look at how we can connect the two together. Now, when you open up Oracle SQL Developer, it looks very busy. There is this big welcome page, but don't worry about it. Let's just close it with the X, and there we go. So you can see there isn't actually that much going on. So we've got some reports down there, which we won't be using that much at the minute. And we've got up here connections. Well, what do we need a connection for? Well, Oracle SQL Developer is the front engine and we previously installed Oracle Database Express Edition. So we need these two to talk to each other. And the easiest way to do that is just click on this plus sign next to connections. So we've got this dialog box, a new database connection. Now we only have to set this up once. So we can call it anything. So I'm going to call it SQL Database. Now you can give it a color and I would recommend you do this because that means that when you connect to it, it will display that color in a couple of places. So you will be able to see now which database we're going to be connecting to. It's the local one. Basically, everything is set up for you apart from your username and password. So we're going to come in as sys because this is just our test database. It's not one that we're using in a commercial setting. And we're going to need the password. So this is the password that you had previously set up. So I hope you remember it. And then finally, what we need to do is change the role. I'm going to check save database as well, so I don't need to type it in again. Now, if I go down here and click on test, you can see that our role should either be sysdba or sysopa. Now, sysdba is for fully empowered database administrators. So it allows you to see everything. And sysopa allows you to do basic operational tasks, but without the ability for you to look at your data. Well, we really want to see everything. So I'm going to connect as a sysdba. So if we change the role to sysdba, click test again, you can see we now have success. So it looks very complicated, but the good news is you only have to do this the want when connecting to one particular database. So let's click connect. And you can see that we've got this new database connection, which is in red, SQL database. Also notice that we've got this window, or well, this window is also in red. Now, if you don't like this particular color, no problem. Just right and click on SQL database, go down to properties, and then you can change the color. So I'm going to change it to a more standard black. Now, the reason for having these colors is if you connect to multiple databases, then you can swiftly see which database you're in. So now let's close all of these tabs, right and click and go to close all. So we've now created a connection to our database. So for me, this is the most complicated bit done. We've installed the back end Oracle Database Express Edition. We've installed the front end SQL Developer, and now we've created a connection. So in the rest of the course, we can actually focus on what we actually want to do, creating select statements, all of the coding, and everything else that's required for this certification and to learn SQL generally. So now if I want a new tab, I can go to this SQL icon here, click on my database connection and click OK, or I can click on the drop down and select the database connection from here. And then I can type in my code and then press play to run the code. So now you're fully set up to write your SQL codes in Oracle. Thank you very much for watching this video. If I can help you further with your Oracle SQL journey, then why not join me in my Udemy course? Here we'll create tables, learn how to use the six principal clauses of the select statement, learn about union, case, merge, find about constraints and views, 
and so much more. And in the description to this video, you'll find a link to this course at a very special price. Well, thank you very much for watching this and keep learning.